We're live now. Awesome. Hello out there. Talking customer service because it's that time of year. Not that you shouldn't be doing good customer service all year round, but the holiday season is going to be a really hot topic. So if you're tuning in, welcome. Please feel free to ask questions to our expert client panel that I'm going to go ahead and introduce and waste no time whatsoever. So the first person we actually have is Philip from greenmunch.ca. And Jess, our little orchestrator, she's going to go ahead and chat that URL to you so you can go and check him out. Again, it's greenmunch.ca. Would you tell us a little bit about yourself and your business, my dear? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Philip, and uh, I'm the owner of Green Munch. Um, we started in 2011. Uh, we launched our store using Big Commerce. Um, so our tagline is sustainable, entertaining, in style. So basically, we specialize in compostable party and event supplies. So um, you know, a lot of biodegradable and compostable dinnerware. Um, you know, just real nice products. Um, you know. So a lot of our customers, you know, we have a lot of customers looking for, you know, green products, but then we just have, you know, a lot of our customers that just want great products and, you know, they happen to be, you know, they they have to be compostable. And, I love uh, it. That's awesome. We're big down in here in Austin on that. I don't know about the rest of the group, but that's super cool. Going to be looking you up for Thanksgiving. So that's okay. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So next in line, excuse me, we have Josh from Store yourboard.com and again Jess will chat you that URL so you can check it out in the audience. Josh would you tell us a little bit about you and your business? We would love to hear about it. Yeah, um, founded uh, storeyourboard.com uh, about five years ago. Uh, basically we started um, in the kind of rack business, basically storage and display racks for different types of board sports, uh, say surfboards, skateboards, snowboards, stuff like that. Um, and as we continue to grow, we're kind of getting into more accessories and stuff like uh, different kinds of things related to those board sports. So uh, Very cool. That's kind of what we do. I love it. That's awesome. Very different from what we just heard about. Very yeah. cool. Next, we have uh, Jacob. Jacob's from Uplifting. Oh, sorry, I just did that. I rep- no, there we go. We were talking earlier. That's why I was like, yeah. wait a It's been a long day. So, Jacob is from up- upliftingplay.com. Again, upliftingplay.com. Tell us a little bit about your business. Sure. Hi, I'm Jacob. I sell art supplies and educational toys for kids. And I just started it as like an experiment, as a hobby, um, to kind of just see if I could, you know, sell things. Um, and I, I like to teach kids how to draw, so that's kind of how it started. Some ebooks, and then I try to support those ebooks with uh, art supplies and, and toys. I love it so much. I love drawing myself. Not super good at it, but I'll have to check you out. Maybe I can take some kid kid classes and. <laughs> That'd be great. Well, uh, looks like Dave stepped away for a second. So Colin, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, CaptainChocolate.com.au. I kind of want to go look at it now because I'm starving. Could you tell us a little bit about your business? That would be great. Yeah, sure. Um, I started this about uh, four years ago. I was a child of the GFC. I uh, taught exhibition marketing. I used to go out to America and all around the world and stuff, but all the money dried up, so I thought I'd better do something, so I started this. So I've got captainchocolate.com.au. Um, I sell across Australia and New Zealand online. I make my products. I come up with all sorts of ideas. Um, my wife is very good. She uh, allowed me to take over the double garage and turn it into a factory. So I make the products, I take it to farmers markets and um, I sell online. And I was looking around for something which really worked for me and that's when I found uh, Big Commerce and I've been uh, running around and chuckling ever since. I love it. This is awesome. Very cool. Thank you. I'm definitely going to check you out too because chocolate's my game. And then we have April. April, how are we doing on the sound situation? I don't know. Can you hear me now? (laughs) (laughs) There it goes again. No worries. We can hear you, but we can't see you. So okay. it's totally That's perfect. Yep, good That's for perfect. now. That's okay. So it sounds good. Like Oops, sorry. Go ahead. April, are you there? There she is. Yeah. Goes. Okay. It's going to be difficult. <laughs> no worries. I'll whisper because it looks like little man's going to sleep. Um, no. Tell us a little bit about your business. Um, I'm a online dancewear company. Okay. I sell to professional ballet dancers, um, supplies that they need for work. Um, it's all pieces that are made by dancers themselves, so um, they're handmade, mostly, pieces Very for professional niche. Very neat. Awesome. And I didn't get to say your uh, store name. It was rotationdancewear.com, and Jess, of course, will chat that to the audience so you can go check her out while we're talking. So thank you all very much for coming and joining us. Let's jump right into the meat and potatoes, customer service. Again, holidays are coming up, so very important, and something 
important all year round. And our expert clients are going to share lots of tips. Um, Jess is going to be fielding questions from the audience. If you have them and you're out there and listening, toss them to us and we will field them and pitch them to our expert clients. Please ask questions. That's what they're here for. We only have them for a short time. So first question, and maybe April, if you don't mind, maybe pitching this one to you first, is what channels are you most impactful, impactful for customer service? So do you use phone, email, live chat, like a form? Where do you most engage with your clients? It's mostly through email. That seems email? to be the easiest for people and easiest for me also. So, Okay. Anybody else in the same boat or different? Yeah, I would say uh, e e email as well is probably the most common, uh, as well as as well as phone. There's definitely some people who just want to hear a live person on the other end. I think. Uh, yeah. And uh, an another thing we've kind of implemented on our website is uh, kind of an FAQ uh, thing. It's kind of we we phrase it as kind of ask the expert on the bottom right. of most of our product pages, and it's kind of more of a focus thing where it's you know hey we're really checking out this page, and it's like hey I really would like to know this specific little detail about this product. So that's something that's kind of kind of done well for us. And the, the cool thing that we try to do is then post that so that, you know, the, the next customer can also see that. And then eliminating the number of touches that you have to do. Right. I love that. Uh, that's great. Uh, you know, cr cr create that knowledge on our website so people don't have to ask us every time. You know, it's kind of more of a self-done. Do you list the answers on the actual product page, or do you list it elsewhere? Oh, on the product page. Well, 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 on the product page, so it's, so it's nice and focused as far as, you know, this applies exactly to this product. I like it very much. That's very cool. Um, form submission on the product page. Love it. Anybody else have any other tactics that they like to use or things that stand out as far as the most touches from a client that you need to tend to? Um, I... Um I go to mar farmers markets because we're having food stuff, so uh, chocolate. I go to farmers markets and that, and I, I talk to people. I go to school, so, uh, school fates as well. I talk to people, and then as a result of what they say, I come back and I try to improve my web page. Uh, one of the things people say is, "Oh, my chocolate will melt." Well, that's going to be something which people are going to be thinking about online. You should mail it as well. So, I've uh, I've put a, quite a lot about that, about how we protect the chocolate. Uh, and also, um, I've um, I've had a couple of apps created by uh, Active up in Austin, Texas, and um, I, I try to say to people, well, use the app, have a look, and we're really trying to work on that to give answers to people, anticipate from the face to face, and then putting them into the website, which copies across to the app. Oh, neat! Very neat. Is it something we can go and take a look at? People can see on your store the application, or where would they find that? Uh, yeah, you can have a look on uh, captainchocolate.com.au, and if you look on the mailing and about us area, around about that area, I'd, I'd have to look at it. I, I forget what to do half the time. And also, you can download the app for um, either um, for um, um, iOS and also for uh, Android uh, for Captain Chocolate, and then you'll see we're still playing with it. It's uh, going, it's uh, being adjusted right now, but you'll see what we're saying. Nice. Did you have that custom built, or is it something that someone helped you with, or what? Uh, it's it's actually tremendously easy on uh, Big Commerce. Uh, there are uh, on the um, on the plugins. You just go in there and you look for Active. It took me about forty minutes, uh, literally forty minutes, and uh, so, uh, of uh, of doing the stuff. I just could not believe it. I pay about twenty four dollars a month or something, and uh, they just support me like you wouldn't believe. Uh, and it's very, very easy, and you can control everything. You can control almost everything directly through Big Commerce. It's brilliant. I love that. Very good. It's actually one I'm not super familiar with, so I appreciate that insight. It's very awesome. Okay, so next question I have is: Do people, or excuse me, actually, do you guys have dedicated support teams or support people, or is it something spread across your entire company? So if anyone wants to kind of feel that or jump on, especially if you have a team. We have a dedicated support person. Okay. Um, yeah, some, something that, that we found is there's definitely certain characteristics that, that make for a good customer sales rep. Um, mm -hmm. So we've kind of uh, honed in on that, and uh, one person on the team in particular is very good at that, you know, as far as being empathetic, but also, yep. you know, understanding, hey, we can't just bow to any ridiculous type of comment, but, you know, hey, we want to understand where you're coming from and try to help you out. And, and, you know, try to make your, you know, shopping experience a good one. I like that. Empathetic, but uh, also a little stubborn, too, and knowing right. when to pick. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Good. Awesome. Anybody else? Uh, do you feel them all yourselves? What's that like, maybe? I would love to hear about that. Well, 
Well, for, for us, basically, um, I'm the support team. And, you know, the one problem that we've had is, is uh, we have a lot of products. And so I think, you know, getting other people to be knowledgeable, you know, when you might have a few hundred products, especially when you have lots of variations, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's, that's a difficult thing. So I know, you know, as we're, we're sort of scaling up, I can see in the future, um, you know, when I need to hand this off, this is going to be, take, take some effort, um, you know, trying to, you know, I should be working on my creating training guides now, right? Curriculum, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that when the time, you know, when I need to hand it off, it's not this, this big effort. Um, some of the things that we've done, basically implemented this summer, was trying to be more efficient. Um, you know, like we've posted, you know, we have our going phone system, so, you know, it was cheap to get a, a toll-free number, and, you know, we post that up. And, you know, we want people to, to phone, but at the same time, typically phone calls take longer to, to yeah. process an order. So, you know, in the same way, like, you guys were talking about having, uh, you know, good questions answered on your website. You know, making it easy for people to get their answer prior to doing a phone call um, is good. So we've tried, uh, we've integrated the OLARC uh, chat. And um, this, you know, we get a, a few people using this. Mm -hmm. um, the one problem we had was, you know, I'll, I'll be watching the chat, but, you know, maybe I'm out packing orders or, or doing something else. So... The computer will be on, and, you know, somebody tried to chat, but, you know, I've been away for 30 minutes, so I'd miss yeah. it. So, so that was a big problem, or I'd forget to turn it on, you know, as I'm running around. So, you know, they have, there's a great client for your phone that I got, and, you know, I have all, you know, all our, our uh, all the calls come directly to my cell phone to get forwarded, and so these chats I can get directly to my cell phone, so, you know, I can be back in the warehouse uh, you know, working on something and, and, you know, the chats come right in. So that was That's really neat. Calls and chats. I love that. You can also do, I've seen people, I don't know if anyone does it here, they have away messages. So if someone's not able to respond, a lot of the live chat features will have uh, a form pop up automatically after a minute or 30 seconds. If there's no response, it's like, hey, sorry, we're, you know, inundated or we're away at the moment. That was just kind of, it's nice, not as nice as being directed to an actual phone, but it's another option for people. So, yeah, yeah I love it. Um, I got, or let's see. Go ahead, Josh, if you have something, go for it. Oh, yeah, I think there was just a question about the live chat. That's definitely something that um, we've, we've been looking into, and I think kind of uh, going on what the last person said, I, the reason we haven't implemented it yet is because I was a little bit worried about we kind of I feel like if we want to have it we want someone like there right away answering it and uh, right now even though we have kind of a customer service person she's doing a lot of other things as well so I'm kind of worried about you know is she gonna be there right when the person's like hey we need we have this question you know so that's something that we're looking at it sounds like there's some options as far as you know you can turn it off turn it on you can you know do an away mess or something like that so. That's definitely yeah. something that we are looking into because I feel like uh, people are just so much more into kind of the, the text-based chatting these days. And I know even myself, you know, when I'm on a site, a, a bigger site, you know, I'm much more apt to use the, t the chat rather than call in and go through 15 menus and try to figure out, you know, who I can. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. Like, everyone's different for me. For some reason, I hate live chat. And we, I have people who do it exceptionally well. I would rather call or I'd rather submit an email. It seems silly. I don't know why I'm that way. I'm like an odd duck, I suppose. But, um, anyone else on live chat from the question from our audience from Mike? Thoughts, feelings, emotions? No? Okay, moving on. So third question, what's your system or formula for preparing your business on the back end to ensure a good customer experience, making sure you have enough inventory, shipping, returns policy? Like, what does the back end look like for you guys? Or even just tips. I know there's a lot. So, like, three tips, one tip that you love we're making sure that you're prepared for orders. Anybody want to feel that? Go for it. Um, for, for myself, what I do is I um, I look at what my sales have been over the last uh, four months or so. I put them into a spreadsheet and I just key in the, the, this SKU, that SKU, and so on. And you can do that automatically depending on your system as well. And then I uh, range it to see what is the biggest seller, and I, I make a focus to make sure that that stuff is absolutely in stock. Um, if I have any issue with a customer um, and they, they want something I don't I don't have, it's it's extremely rare. I just get onto them, I, I tell them, and I say to them, look, you're special, I'll make it for you, and I'll have that to you within whatever days, three days or whatever. I love it. 
Anybody else on preparing the back end of tips that you, you like to use? Yeah, I, I find for my customers, because most of the things that I make are, are made by hand and it takes time to give, just being super clear on every all of my web pages on how long it takes and how long, you know, how when they'll have it by is really great. Most people are really thankful just to see it in writing when it's going to go and being consistent with that seems to be really great. So, Which I love that you said it because so many people are hesitant to do that, especially if they're making something that takes a long time, but people will wait if you're hand making an item or it takes a little while if you're just up front with them. They, people feel as though if you're up front they will be discouraged from purchasing, which you might get a few people, but you know, overall it's going to help you ultimately save time and, and energy and money too. So, yeah, I love that. That's awesome. I'm glad you're up front with people. That's the best thing you can do. Um, anybody another else? Thing, oh, go ahead. Yeah, another thing I find really useful are the features within BigCommerce where uh, when you have an order comes in, you can actually click and say uh, awaiting shipment or shipped or uh, awaiting pickup or, or uh, delayed or whatever that's going to be. I find that useful because people really feel that they're being loved. You don't have to do a lot of work. You just have to make a click and then they yep. get their email. And that, that's fantastic. And I've had customers call and say, what do you use? That's so good. I really love to know what you're doing. And just to give a little BC plug, you can customize all those emails too. So that's pretty exciting stuff. But no matter what platform you should be customized with. Make sure your logo is on there and goodness. I love it. Any other thoughts on that last question? Preparing the back end, tips for shipping, inventory management. Yeah, I would just, uh, I mean, I would definitely agree. I think being up front is definitely the, the best policy. I mean, we, we, we definitely try to do like, uh, you know, some others noted, try to stock up on what's popular. You know, you obviously want to kind of try to streamline that. I know right now we're definitely in a little bit of our uh, trough as far as sales and, you know, we're, we're geared up for the holidays. So this is the time when you want to spend the time to make sure everything's efficient, make sure you're stocked up, make sure you're ready such that when the, when, when the big rush come, you know, you can, you, you can fulfill it. You know, we're, we're starting to talk to some of our suppliers, start to talk about some of that, you know, make it really a, a, a team type of game where, hey, you know, we both want to sell more, you know, let's, let's make sure we're ready. This is what happened last year. This is our growth rate this year. Let's make sure that, you know, we're ready to rock and, uh, and, and, and go for it. But I, you know, I would definitely agree. We sell a lot of different types of, of racks and, you know, all kinds of different accessories. And yeah, some are handmade, you know, handmade, beautiful wooden racks when it's like, yeah, these guys, you know, these guys are literally probably in their garage and it might take five to seven days for them to make it. But, you know, it's this beautiful custom-made thing. And, you know, many customers are willing to wait that. I would just say, yeah. you know, be up front. You know, there's an availability thing. And then if they check, you know, if they if they contact our customer service, we're very upfront about, hey, you know, this is handmade. You know, we're making this just for you. We're going to, you know, it's you know it's been three days. You know, we expect it to be five days. You know, we're going to send out the tracking number as soon as we can. And, and you know, it'll, it, it, it'll be there as soon as it can. You know, that's yeah. it. It's amazing how, you know, even when I'm shopping online, I know statistically it's true as well, someone emailing you and saying, you know what, we're going to run them a little behind, I apologize. Right. And then if you're really feeling, you know, cruddy about it, throw a little 20% coupon off, sorry for your trouble, you know, like some sort of little surprise and light, and it's like, oh my gosh, I love this company from you just having, like it just ends up turning into this great thing rather than just a good thing that they purchased. I love it. Um, any thoughts on um, returns and exchanges policies or tips around a returns and exchanges policy to kind of, really kind of surprise and delight or just make sure you have really good customer service around it? Silence. No worries. <laughs> um, returns and exchanges, definitely important to at least have up there, but um, it's really, again, I think it comes back to being transparent. So yeah. I think that's the number one thing. I would say in general, we used to have a 30-day um, exchange oh. policy just because that's kind of what I felt like norm was, but... Um, we sell more of like a hard, durable good, you know, racks and different types of accessories that are physical products. So we've we've expanded ours to 90 days, and I mean, basically, we'll take it back if if we if we can resell it if it's in good shape, you know, we'll we'll take it back whenever. You know, um, I think you know if you're in something that's consumable or something that's maybe apparel related or something like that, it's a little bit harder to do that type of thing, but. For us, you know, we just, you know, we, we just kind of want to eliminate as many barriers to buying as possible, and having a good return policy is is kind of part of that. You know, hey, if you don't like it, send it back. You know, we're more than happy to take it back. You know, we just want you to be happy, type of thing. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. Very cool. Hey, Josh, do, do yeah. you do you cover the cost of shipping both ways? So we have a uh, we have a policy that right now it's kind of um, if 
if it's anything on our part, if it's anything that we messed up, if it's any kind of a defect in the product or anything, you know, yes, we're going to cover that back. We're going to send them, a, you know, a, a, a prepaid UPS mail or anything like that. If it's more of just like, hey, I got what I ordered, but, you know, hey, it didn't really fit or, ah, my, you know, I didn't really like this. My wife, my husband, they didn't really like this. Then then we, we, we have them, you know, pay for the return shipping. But, you know, then, then we re refund the cost, um, the cost of the actual product to them. Okay. Right. Very cool. Yeah, um, we, we sort of, you know, we, we have our, our 30 day policy, and, and normally, you know, the policy is this the customer pays for the return. Um, but, you know, usually what happens, I mean, we have had so few returns, you know, that it, it doesn't really affect us much. But normally, if, if a customer, you know, just picks something wrong and, and, you know, the same way, it was sort of their fault, and, and you know, then they pay the return. But, you know, if the customer is actually, like, really disappointed in the product for some reason, you know, like, basically felt that, you know, it wasn't described properly or, yeah. you know, just didn't meet their expectations, I mean, we just, you know, we just make the problem go away, right? I mean, it's just easier and, and better just, you know, we ship them a label and, and you know, problem solved, right? It's, it's, you know, the last thing you want is to sort of have something just drag on and, and, and then, you know, you feel better because, you know, I for me, I kind of, you know, maybe take things a little too personally, right? You know, so you don't want to <laughs> end the day with, yeah. you know, some customer mad at you, right? You know, it's better to just, okay. No problem. Here's, yep, no problem. Slips on the way. No big deal. Yeah, and then you, you know, you end the day and, and you know, you, you feel good, right? And, and yeah. most customers, you know, they'll, they'll be happy with that. Yeah, and I think there's something to be said. There's a delicate balance between getting enough information so it doesn't happen again from the client, like knowing what was wrong and just picking at the wound and just making it worse than it needs to be. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, next question, and actually maybe this is something that I could direct straight at you, Jacob, for personalization. So is there, you have personalized products and goodness, but is there anything that you do to kind of personalize your shopping experience um, and kind of direct make it a more personal shopping experience to kind of reflect your brand or anybody at all if one to field that question feel free. Well my business is like a baby, you know, I just started out and I had no no money really. So I had to totally bootstrap it. Um so I'm like, well what is what is gonna make me different than any other store? I you know I, places like uh Amazon that they're not gonna sit down and write a personalized uh product description. That's something that I do because I have the time. Right. So every product description that I have I try to like give my personal it's almost like a review as a product description. It's like my first hand take with the product. I've used it. My son's played with it. And this is why I think you should buy it. Yeah. So it's like a personal way of doing that. And then my logo is my face. You know, I kind of ran in my logo around me. And when you and when you come into the, the home page, it's kind of like a welcoming message for me. So I, I kind of envision that when you come to my store, it's almost like coming to a small toy store. And you, you're meeting the owner of the store. You're not meeting like a salesperson. You're meeting the owner. And that's kind of the the goal with that. It's funny you said that, and I, I, because I was making noise, I was on the screen, and I saw mm -hmm. my face go, oh, like that. <laughs> like, oh, so cute. Is that good? the response you want? You want to warm welcome. Um, anyone else? Personalization tips, whether it's email on your site, social, any tips at all that stand out yeah. for you guys? It's the same thing for me. A lot of our pieces are, um, you know, designed for each dancer. So we do things like. Um, you know, include your hair color when placing your order so that the the support pieces for a tiara can be colored for each dancer's headpiece for their hair color. So it matches them individually and each piece is wrapped um, as if you were to walk into a small boutique and buy it rather than, you know, again, like a big, you know, company sending it in just a, a plain box. It kind of feels a little bit like you went into a store and, and purchased it and it was wrapped, uh, you know, right there in front of you kind of a feeling. So I love that. Um, anybody else on personalization? Thoughts? Yeah, I'm, I've got a manual thing I do with the uh, every customer. Basically, when I get a customer, I want them to come back. So I, do, I see that at the beginning of the journey. So on every uh, packing slip, I just put a little uh, thanks, Joe, and a smiley. And uh, people really react to it. They feel, well, someone called me Joe and uh, put a smiley on, and, uh, and they come back and they say, hey, thank you. That's nice. And then I see them pop up again with another order. See, I'm, I, I test people and because I just am interested to see how much people are paying attention. So I'll write, hey, could you draw a, you know, a liking of me or my husband? I'm like, can you include glasses and a goatee on you know, a six-foot-tall man and draw on the package? Like, just see how much people are paying attention. And so often people will do little things like that too. Be like, have special requirements for your package. You know, 
and they'll draw me a little picture or something like that to see how much they're paying attention to what their clients are asking them. Um, so. That's a very good point. I'm sorry, I think I walked talked over you. No. Um, that's a very good point. We had a lady and she was very concerned about possums eating her chocolate. So uh, she said, "Could I? Uh, could I do? Could I assure that the possums didn't eat the chocolate?" So uh, what I did was I made up a little label and I, I put on it: uh, "Possum oh. paw, uh, uh, possums keep out. Very bad for possums." <laughs> and uh, you know, this started to get a bit of a, of a thing of its own and its own right because she put something on Facebook and then she came back and said, "I love this company," and, yes. and she'd got pictures because every time I'd send something out, I have a different possum picture. And oh, wow. uh, I, I, the possums never did get anything, but I don't imagine they did any reading. But it, it, it certainly did create a, 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 a relationship. You and, uh, and, really, and fact, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. If you go on my web page and you look on um, on uh, shipping, you can go down and actually say something about uh, if there's any special uh, re request. So following on from what you said, that's, that's what we do here. But we can do that because we, as myself, on the Jack Russell Terrier. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love that. I think that's um, awesome, Sue, that you got this weird request of, I don't want the possum to get my package, so, you know, make sure you wrap it specially, or I don't know exactly what she asked, but you kind of, you you did it, but she didn't really do it. Like, it really wasn't answering her question. It just made her laugh. Like, I think that's awesome. Have fun with it. Like, that's the advantage of being a small business. You have, you can you can do these things that really make people customers for life. That's that's where it is. So, it's a lot of fun, it. too. Yeah, have fun with it. Um, awesome. That's a, possums, babies, we got everything. This is great. So um, we have a question about promotions through the holidays. This is a kind of a quick one. Do you guys tend to run promotions throughout the holiday, or do you just do it, you know, before the holiday, like October, November, and like let it bleed out into December? Or how do you guys structure things? I guess if anybody has any tactics, that'd be great. Nothing. I think in just general. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I think in general what we try to do is, I mean, our 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 policy is kind of just to kind of have that everyday low price. You know, we want to provide it, provide that that good price to everyone. You know, who who comes on and not just be so. I'm only going to buy when there's a sale type of thing. So in general, we try not to do tons and tons of promotions. But what we're what what we're trying to move more toward and what we're having some success with is try to do very very kind of focused promotions where it's to a particular sub-segment of our customers that yeah. are interested in this one sport in particular where, okay, you know, you guys are all snowboarders, we know that, and hey, this is one of our best-selling racks, and hey, if, you know, if we, we can give a better price, so, you know, try to really, really be much more focused rather than just throwing out those, hey, here's 20% off, here's this, you know, more, you know, kind of guide them to what, you know, is more profitable for us or, what is a good seller, and you know, and we can really ramp up the volume. So we kind of try to be a little bit more focused on that, um, you know, on our promotions. I love that personal, which means profitable. So I love that. It's another personalization kind of tactic too of making sure you understand what your clients want. So I love that. That's awesome. We I actually just recorded something on that the other day. So that's great. Anybody else on holiday promotions or just promotions in general, customer service wise, how to mix it up, make people happy? Um, I'd like to know how people get um, get folk to. Sorry, I talked over you again. I'm really good at that. <laughs> uh, I, I would like to know what people feel about uh, getting others to to order as well. Because if they're happy, how can they tell others so that then they can come back? Because I'm all about growing the business. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Um, how are you promoting? Are you doing a lot of email? Because you can maybe have a button that says for forward to a friend that's really large and prominent on the page on your emails? It's an idea. Yeah, it, it is. I, um, there seems to be a few of those, and I sort of just, yeah, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I just try to get involved with it, but then there's also only so many hours in a day. The smaller your business, the harder it is to press all the buttons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was struggling with that, too. I, I had been, since the beginning, um, Packaging everything with extra, um, you know, promotional cards, just photos of what I do and the web page, and so everything, everything I send comes with a something that they could potentially hand out to somebody else. So it, 
they may or may not get into someone else's hands, but I figured, you know, people tend to throw those things in their bag or, you know, take it along with them. You never know when someone's having a conversation with a friend that they got something great. and Oh, I happen to have the, their business card or that kind of stuff. So... Mm -hmm. For us, you know, this, this spring we started to put a, a bunch of things in place to try to help, um, you know, leverage our, our existing customers. So, you know, historically we've been pretty poor at, at promoting through email. You know, we've got our, our newsletter list and, and we've been slowly gaining subscribers. But, um, you know, just as you mentioned, you know, there's always a lot of things to do, you know, whether you're doing Facebook or, or whatever. And, and just getting the email newsletters hasn't wasn't on the top of our list. And so... This um, um, one tool that we used was the Yachtpo plugin for the product reviews, and this has been really great. So, so this is do, does a couple um, um, things. There is that instead of just you know, uh, basically after the order goes out, um, we I think we set it up so a couple weeks later they get an email, and instead of just right away coming out and saying. Um, you know, please review the products that you have. Basically, we do sort of um, start off by saying, um, you know, did you receive your order? Was there any problems with it? And then, and then further down the email, then we ask them to do a product review. Um, the good thing about this is this has helped us solve a few problems because we'll occasionally, you know, every few weeks get an email from an angry customer responding to this saying, oh, I didn't get my order. And, you know, basically when we look into it, usually it ends up, you know, Canada Post uh, delivered but didn't leave their notice, right? So their order's been sitting for two weeks at the post office, you know, waiting to get picked up. Um, so, you know, this automated system of with the reviews of, you know, following up with them was really good because, you know, immediately we could follow up, you know, phone the customer and, and you know, problem solved, right? Yeah. Um, and the interesting part about this tool is that you can, they've got it so that you can include coupons in this email. And the other thing you can do is you can set it up so if they, if the customer shares something on their social media, you can get, um, you know, different coupons. So there's going to be incentives. Um, we haven't really turned this feature on yet. Mm -hmm. um, probably it's something we're going to look at, look at doing. Um, but I think there, you know, there's, there's, Possibly that that could help. Um, the other thing for us that we want to try to do is is how to get more of our customers supplying us with product photos. So of course yeah. you know a lot of our customers are are buying stuff for weddings, right? Whether it's the dinnerware or some party supplies. So of course they're they're usually making you know creative things, and so you know we we want to see how can we you know, set up a, a place where they can upload photos and, you know, maybe get some store credit. And then, of course, you know, this is going to be, you know, really help us sell products because a lot of our products, you know, customers might see and, and not know how to use it, right? How can they, you know, use this craft material to, to do something? So mm -hmm. that that's on our to-do list this winter to try to, you know, figure out something like that. Yeah. I think, too, for, for you, it might be fun, and what I've seen be really successful is including some sort of nugget in the box that makes people want to take a picture of it and share it once they get it. Yes. So, like your possum story, um, Birchbox is my favorite story. They're a much larger company, but they encourage people. It just started to happen naturally, and they've just nurtured the heck out of it, that when someone gets a package, they're supposed to take a picture of it. So you could, you know, have a little, you could buy a couple little tiny possums, stick them in your box and have a card and just be like, sorry, possum got in your box, learn the story at blah, blah, blah. People take a picture. Um, there's another guy who puts um, little, uh, I got that idea because there's another guy who puts a dinosaur in the box with all of his kids' t-shirts. Um, and it's just like, uh, you know, protect, I think it's like protector of your of your kids' t-shirt. I protected your t-shirt on the order. Glad it came here. Like, you know, my name is Fred something. And like everyone's taking pictures of these things and sharing it. Um, especially for food. People love pictures of food, so social might really help you out in kind of spreading the word and having your clients do it for you a little bit, and keep that fun vibe that you got going on. So, I love the possum. I think that's hilarious. That's something that could catch on. I don't know how you can incorporate it, but so Dave, <laughs> Dave you were going to say something earlier. I think about um, promotions. Did you still have something to add, or are you feeling good? Oh, uh, um, 
how you run promotions tips or anything like that to help clients? I can't remember what I was going to say. I, I think one of the that things... was a while ago. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Um, one of the things I, I know I do, um, and, and it depends, I guess, uh, you know, what, what you're selling, but for me it's, um, you know, MMA gear, sporting mm -hmm. goods, Sporting goods and stuff like that. So there's a there's a strong uh, and a big community uh, of people that you know participate in various martial art disciplines and uh, that are interested in mixed martial arts. Nice. And uh, so it, it, there's one forum in particular that you know all fans go to uh, to talk about you know different things and. Um, so I, I often go on there and will post my promotions, special deals, answer questions, chime in on a topic, and you know lets people know that you know like he's he's this is a real person and he's joined the forum and he's talking to us and uh, inviting us to come check out his store and participate and you know take advantage of all these great deals and uh, that's been real effective for me. Uh, in terms of traffic and conversions, right. so again, it depends on the, the you know the whatever it is that you're selling or business you're in. But try to find usually there's there's a forum for everything. There's you know there's that one place that everybody goes to to talk about that thing, and um, even if it's a, even if you have to pay money, uh, like in my case, I, I the paid membership, only like a hundred bucks a year, but it's the best hundred bucks. Yeah. That I that I've spent in terms of uh, getting people to visit my site. I mean, it, you know, it's been really effective. So yeah, find out. There was a woman we were talking to. I think it was in the last hangout on Pinterest, Jess, and she uh, she went into what are they called? She she sells like yarn and knitting things, but she was like it was a, a, a knit, knit along. Knit along. It's called a knit along. So you follow along with the knitting, and you like follow this whole. And it's just like her bread and butter. She gets all these clients because she found this forum where everyone's hanging out. I love it. I perfect. I love it very much. Awesome. Cool. So next, and actually maybe day you might be a great person since uh, you're doing MMA stuff. I don't know. Maybe your clients are really chill or angry. I'm not sure. But how do you deal with angry customers? Got yeah, tips, tricks? Has it? Maybe it's never happened before. Um. Usually, I, I don't. You know, fortunately, I haven't had a lot of. People get angry, you know. I've had I, I, one person mentioned it here. You know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I, I I'm not I'm not trying to win, you know, a battle. You know, if it's it's just going to cost me a few bucks to make that person go away and make them happy, then that's what I'll do. Um, you know, at the same time, yeah. At the same time, um, you know, I make I'm, my policy on returns and things are very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, if, if things don't fit, or, you know, basically, if it was like, because I'm in the retail business, if it's if it was a mistake on your part, you know, there's no problem. We don't charge a restocking fee. You can return that item uh, within 30 days. Um, uh, but we, you know, we don't pay to have it shipped back. You've got to ship it back to us. Yep. And then we'll, re you know, what we inspect it as long as it's in uh, resellable condition, then you know, we would uh, give them a full refund minus the shipping, you know, to get it there. If it's a defect or something like that, of course, we would ship right. them a label, you know. Um, we've had a, I've had a couple people, you know, just, just you know, claim that it was defective but really didn't fit or whatever. And I knew that. And, again, at the end of the day, I don't, I'm not trying to uh, start a war with anybody. Um you're always going to have those people, and you know, it, it could cost you more uh, if they start going on, you know, forums, going on Yelp, different things like yeah. that, and leaving all kinds of negative reviews that aren't true. But you know, what are you going to do? Then you're then you're left in a position where you're defending yourself, and I, I mm -hmm. don't, I'd rather not get into all that if if I can avoid it. Yeah, uh, I think that's something I see a lot of uh, people are just starting out trip up on because they don't have a large budget. They're kind of nickel and diming uh, ultimately, but they don't really understand that maybe it, it's not something you can measure right away, but that single person can talk to a lot of people. And it's right as your business is starting up, so it can be detrimental. 
So I think that's really awesome. Uh, anybody else ever have an, if you're willing to admit having an angry client, do you have any tips or uh, want to share some stories? If anyone's willing, that'd be great, but that's okay. If not. Yeah, one thing I would add is um, just in general, um, I feel like you want to try to be empathetic and just kind of like, acknowledge that they're upset. I feel like some people just want to rant because they want to be heard, kind of, you know? So just like, oh, we're so very sorry that didn't work out for you, you know? Um, and then kind of what we teach is, yeah, you kind of want to understand what their problem is and then how do you make it better? Oftentimes it's some kind of misunderstanding or something where they, didn't, they weren't really sure how to use it or, you know, they weren't using it properly or something like that. And it's like, hey, you know, you should really be using this instead or, hey, try this. And then suddenly it's like, okay, you turn this person who was ranting and raving into like, you know, suddenly like a brand evangelist, like, oh my gosh, they're so good, you know, they helped us, like, I'm going to tell my friends, this is so it's great. amazing that switch happens in an instant. Right, yeah, and I feel like, you know, it's easier because, you know, then it's one-on-one -on -one contact with our customer service rep and the customer and this and that, and that's when it's, you know, that's what we teach, like, hey, you need to try to, you know, get them on our side, you know, like, you know hey, what, what can we do to make them happy? And then when you do please them, then they're much more willing to, you know, go ahead and kind of be that brand, you know, enthusiast for you. I like that. Uh, brand. Anybody else on uh, upset clients, tips, anything like that, or just being proactive to make sure it doesn't happen, things that have worked for anyone? I think really it's just a case of focusing on the customer if they really are unhappy to, to, to fix it whichever way. But I, I think it's interesting that people, they have traits in their characters and if they're really dogmatic in one direction, switch them around and they'll go dogmatic the other. And, and if, But if they're wishy-washy in one direction, they'll be wishy-washy the other. I think it's just the way people are. Yeah. And honoring that is a good thing. I love that. Awesome. So to kind of wrap up, um, if there are any questions from the audience that are burning in your brain, please toss them to Jess, and she will toss them to us via the chat feature. Please feel free to do so. But to kind of wrap up today, we wanted to kind of talk about tips if you happen to have anything that's just like words of wisdom you'd like to impart or things that took you by surprise when it came to customer service and opening up a small business. So if anyone likes to go first, feel free. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. Um, <clears throat> I think... Number one um, on the list would be, you know, the whole world of, of SEO and, and just how important it is to educate yourself on that topic. Um, yeah. You know, for me, that's been, that's been key. I, I spent most of my um, career before this was, is, it was in the IT field. And, you know, yeah, I know it's hard to believe the way I look, but uh, I, uh, you know, it's been... It's been all computers and, and working, in, working in cubicles and, and things like that. And uh, once I got into this, it, it helped. That background helped in terms of building my store. I have a background in graphic design. But SEO completely caught, caught me by surprise. Uh, I mean, I've heard about it. I, I, I had an understanding. But how important it is and, and all the details um, was really was really eye opening. So along with that is all the people that come out of the woodwork, all these companies that call you and you know promise you everything under the sun. Um, you know, I think the most important thing for anybody is you you really need to educate yourself. And and, and I'm not saying you you don't need to you, you can't hire a company to to work for you, but you need to know what's happening. You know, you need to learn along you know, as the process is going and, um, you know, eventually make it your goal to, to do it yourself or, you know, have, have, have somebody that, that works for you that, that you can trust, that you know that they're doing what they say they're doing. Um, that, that's, that's, been, that's been key for me. I've, I've really had an education in SEO and, and uh, I'm able to, and it's obviously it's, it's helped in terms of not only traffic but conversions as well. You know, Getting so. the right people, yeah, for sure. I think that that tends to be, from speaking to clients, the biggest kind of, uh, of pain point, if you will, I suppose. Uh, learning SEO, understanding how to target and find their clients in that manner, because it's very valuable and it'll never fail you, which is great. Or the world. Or the yeah. world. Cool. Any other tips? Uh, power power yeah, tips? Yeah. 
Um, I, I would say in general for customer service, uh, a couple things I've learned. Um, so, I, so I've been in the business like five years now, so it's you know taking me some time to learn these. But uh, number one would be you know you as the founder, as the entrepreneur, you might not be the best person for customer service. I know personally, I'm not. You know, to me, it just some of these requests just you know they infuriate me. But it's like you know people are different, so you know there's different personalities that are more geared toward customer service. So. I would definitely, you know, encourage you to, you know, if you do have multiple people, to kind of try to find someone who is really, you know, geared toward the right person, yeah. that type of customer service. So I would say that right away. As far as just because you started the business doesn't mean you're going to be the best customer service rep. Um, and then the other thing that kind of goes along with that is don't take it personal. You know, I used to take like every complaint, like, oh my gosh, they hate, uh, they hate me, they hate my business, it's terrible, you know, this and that. When it's just like. Um, I think someone else touched on it earlier that, you know, some of these people, it's just their nature to be, you know, argumentative and, and mad and just people are having bad days and they just want to vent and stuff like that. It's like, it's not really all you that, you know, is necessarily the problem. So I would just, I, I would just say that that's definitely helped me over the years. Yeah, I'm super bad at that. And I can imagine if someone especially is like hand baking their products and someone's mad about it, you'd be yeah. like devastated. You poured your heart. Oh, terrible, terrible, terrible. Any other words of advice, uh, closing words of wisdom on customer service? I yeah, think, I uh, call, yeah, go ahead. One, one piece of advice I, I found is like finding um, words that people are searching in your, on your site. Like what are they trying to find? And just by having things more easy to find is just a good way of giving them what they want. I mean, oftentimes you're looking for an address or a phone number or, or a certain product and it isn't able to, it's so easy to find on your site. So I think that's a good way to serve your, your customers that way. Yeah, find out their intent. That's actually a really awesome tip. People forget about that. You can actually, in big commerce, you can actually tag uh, particular products. Like if you type in uh, dog's birthday on my website, I like party hats or something will come up for, for dogs. Like so that people, you can tag what you want things to respond to because you can figure out what it is they're looking for. There's pretty mm -hmm. exciting stuff. So cool. I think, Colin, I think you were trying to say something earlier. I was actually just going to, it's a bit, bit of a distance away now, but with what Dave was saying I think is terribly important about the SEO because he says he was an IT man, uh, take my hat off John for that, um, but the, the thing is that um, we, we don't, just because, we, we can't feel that, I don't think we can feel that we, uh, this is a, 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 this is black magic, it's something which we do need to handle ourselves as opposed to handing across to somebody because things change so quickly and we yeah. we have to stay abreast, we can't hand it off to somebody, it's expensive, they don't move fast enough and often they'll feed you a lot of stuff which just simply isn't right. So we have to keep across it and I think it's a terribly important uh, message. Awesome, I like that a lot. SEO, interesting. I did not expect that to come up today, but I'm, I'm glad it did. Anybody else? Thoughts? Closing words of wisdom? We got April back. You there? Oh, we can't hear you again. No worries. I'm sure you have very, if you want to type something, just closing words of, words of wisdom, uh, tips on customer service, if you happen to have any, feel free. We can kind of share it on your behalf. If not, no worries if you're, your munchkin's in bed. Um, any other thoughts or closing words before I kind of sign us off today? So I'm not seeing any questions coming from the audience. Jess, am I missing anything by chance for audience members? Um, other than the fact that there's a really great comment that somebody left in the Q&A just now. Um, and I would encourage you, and I just sticking it to the top, so I'd encourage you to check that out as well. Great comment. Yeah. Can you share it with us? I can't see it, actually. Let me see. Do you guys want to read it? I'm waiting for it to load. It's taking forever. Uh, actually, if you can go ahead, it's not loading for me for some reason. There. Um, great comment by, I believe, Bright C. Um, if you're still listening out there, where it comes to the acronym uh, LEARN, listen, emphasize, um, acknowledge, respond, and now follow up for a really great process for how to handle um, customer service questions that come up. Yeah. It was very cool. This little acronym, uh, LEARN, listen, empathize, acknowledge, respond, now follow up. It's clever. I like that a whole lot. Very cool. Like magic, yeah. listen to customers. Words of wisdom coming in from all over the place. There is actually one more question that just came in. Of course, I just closed it. For some reason, it's taken forever for me to load. Do you mind pitching it? Sure. 
Um, great question coming in from Mike. What's the best way to tell a customer that shipping is not free? And certainly not on heavy products that just came through. Anybody have uh, thoughts on breaking the news that something isn't free? Shipping. <laughs> I would say once again, just trying to be transparent. Um, you know, we ship some pretty big racks around the country, and uh, just you know, pointing out their dimensions and their weight. You know, when someone learns that, yeah, this thing is 40, 50 pounds. You know, this thing six foot tall. People start to understand. Yes, this isn't your average little you know three by four by five package. You know, so mm -hmm. I would say kind of trying to be upfront and kind of saying, hey, go ahead and you know, this is you know, if, if they're really irate and they're coming at you, it's like you know, look at UPS's website, you know, there are oversized fees based on this, you know, this is the dimensional weight, this is how it works. You this know, isn't this me is, trying to swindle you, this right. is what it costs to this ship This is like package. the actual, you know, I mean, living in the Amazon age, it's like people just think everything's free as far as shipping, but, you know, I think, you know, most people will understand if you kind of give them a couple, you know, upfront, this is how it is, this is really what it's costing us as far as, you know, this is a really large item. Mm -hmm. This is why, and you know, we've we found that that, that usually usually works. Even if you know you're funny, clever about it on like your your shipping and returns policy or just shipping information. Um, if they come at you and they're angry, it's kind of like, hey, sorry, we have this. You know, it's it's heavy, bro. Like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> so, Colin, you're gonna say something, I think. Yeah, I think it really it obviously depends on your industry, but as far as I'm concerned, I mean, my products have been nine ninety five, dollars and it cost me, for the product, it cost me that to get it there. Obviously, you're not going to pay for it, but um, I have a, a policy whereby there's a certain dollar value. Mine it happens to be $70. Above that, I will pay free shipping. Below that, they pay it, and it gives them an aspiration. I'd better, I'd better buy more, and it's worth my while, and it's worth their while, so it really puts it back on them if they want to take it up. But if they don't want to, well, that's cool too. Yeah, it tends to help, I think, too, with uh, products that are a little bit less expensive. So, um, which is nice, and especially with Taco, they're like, ah, oh, sure, I'll get one more, no problem. So, yeah, definitely got you, got to go an advantage there for sure. Cool. Any other thoughts before we kind of wrap up today? Awesome. Thank you all so much for coming out. So appreciate your time. I know it's a lot in this day and age. So thank you for your words of wisdom. Exciting, good stuff. Um, thank you to audience members who came through. Hope you enjoyed it. And thank you, Jess, of course, for orchestrating all of this. Much appreciated. So thank you. Have your night back. We gave you at least